You like him and don't like him, there's nothing you could do about him because he's number one. Whether you like him or don't like him, there's nothing you can do about him because he's number one. Ladies and gentlemen, it is big boy season. It is big boy season. It is big fish man season. Yes, Jinbei season is here yet again. Our favorite fish man is in the spotlight in both the One Piece anime and the One Piece manga. And if you're not caught up with the manga, please note there will be spoilers towards the end of this video, so please be wary of that. Now, Let's begin talking about why Jinbei is one of the most underrated and underappreciated members of the Straw Hat crew. First Son of the Sea, the Knight of the Sea, Boss Jinbei, whatever you want to call him, all of these are suitable epithets for our main man. First mentioned all the way back in Chapter 31, Jinbei is described by the pirate bounty hunter Johnny back all the way before Arlong Park. And the way Johnny describes him is this scary menace who unleashed Arlong on the East Blue. So we're first given this impression that Jinbei is a bad dude. We wouldn't even meet this man. We wouldn't even see Jinbei until chapter 528 all the way in Impel Down. And that's where we see this gallant fish man that captures both our hearts and minds. Impel Down, the first place we meet Jinbei and the first place that he helps Luffy on his quest to becoming King of the Pirates. Well, his first quest, the most pressing quest here, is rescuing Ace from being executed. Without Jinbei at Impel Down, Luffy and the rest of the prisoners never escape the prison. Jinbei calling the whale sharks to actually help them escape the prison and reach the Navy ship is a very critical point of this escape from jail. Obviously Jinbei helps a lot during the escape, fighting off uh, the various creatures and uh, Zoan users that are chasing down the escapees, but the end of this arc is where Jinbei really shines, getting the whale sharks to come and transport them to the stolen Marine's ship. During the events of Marineford, after Impel Down, Jinbei is once again a massive player on this battlefield. Jinbei one-shots Gekko Moria, the same Gekko Moria that had Luffy huffing and puffing just a few arcs back in Thriller Bark. Jinbei one-shots, and he's kind of a hard counter to Gekko Moria because his Fishman Karate, using the sea, gets salt into the mouths of all of his shadow zombies and renders them completely useless, and then he just physically overpowers Gekko Moria. One punch, wham blam, we can ham, gets him out of there. Another big moment for Jinbei and Marineford, launching Luffy onto the platform against the Marine Admirals. Uh, without Jinbei, we don't really get this iconic moment. It's not really like this super big thing, but I mean, that is Jinbei again, helping Luffy rescue Ace. I think that uh, Jinbei's biggest moment in Marineford, however, is him tanking the punch from Admiral Akainu. After him actually punching a hole through Ace, he goes in for another punch, Jinbei stops him, joins the fight. They kind of try to stop Akainu. They're not really good at it. Jinbei tries to run away with Luffy in his arms. Akainu jumps up in the air, punches a hole through Jinbei, kind of. I mean, it doesn't really hit anything vital, but you can see the magma tearing through Jinbei and hurting Luffy as well. I think that this is a really impressive feat because, I mean, the man is a tank at this point. He's been through so much fighting through Impel Down and now fighting on the battlefield of Marineford, now escaping and tanking a punch from a uh, Navy Admiral. I want to say tanking because he did survive it. And uh, I mean, he it, it made him pass out afterward. Buggy threw him onto Law Submarine. But to me, that is still a feat. Saving Luffy's life there and getting away from Admiral Akane. I would say that Jinbei's most important feat pre-time skip is not this tanking of the punch, however. It's what happens after Marineford. Luffy is a broken man after Marineford. He just watched his brother die basically in his arms as they tried to escape the war. Jinbei is there on Amazon Lily with Luffy and he basically talks him out of just breaking down completely. Had Jinbei not been there, Luffy ends up like Gekko Moria, a broken man who is not willing to risk anything. He is reminded that his most precious treasures his crewmates are still there and he has to get stronger in order to fight and to protect them from the new world. Jinbei being there really stops Luffy's downward slide into becoming Gekko Moria and 
puts him right back on the path to becoming the king of the pirates. Now let's talk post time skip. So after the time skip, we get a backstory for our main man, Jinbei. We learn about his history with Fisher Tiger and the Sun Pirates, Queen, and the Queen of the um, of the Fishman Island, which is one of the best backstories, flashbacks, whatever you want to call it, in my opinion, in all of One Piece. I think this is a massively underrated flashback. Fisher Tiger's story is hugely tragic. Him escaping Mari's Raw, helping free the slaves in Mari's Raw, and then later revealing as he's dying that he used to be a slave and that he still hates humans, but he wishes he didn't. So he dies without accepting the blood transfusion from a human is one of the most tragic things in the entire series. And I think this is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, flashback in the entire series. It gives us a look from how Jinbei went from human hater to a person who wants to uh, bridge the gap between the two species. And then in Fishman Island, in the actual arc, Jinbei does a lot there as well. After the fight with Horty and Luffy, Jinbei is there to once again save Luffy's life with a blood transfusion, which if you remembered in the arc, it is said that this is expressly illegal. Fishmen and humans are not allowed to give each other blood transfusions, even though they can, and it would work medically. They're just not allowed. Jinbei does not care. He is a pirate. He will do what he wants. He's going to save Luffy's life yet again. We also learn that Fishman Island is now being protected by the Big Mom Pirates. It was once protected by Whitebeard, but after his death, Fishman Island was no longer protected. Big Mom came, took it under her pirate flag, and now no one messes with them. Luffy asks Jinbei to join, but obviously he can't because he's still part, technically, of the Big Mom Pirate crew. And from here on, we don't see Jinbei again, really, until Whole Cake Island. In between Fishman Island and Whole Cake Island, we do get a cover story with Jinbei, talking about what he was doing during this time, his solo journey, um, him going to Whole Cake. He found a Poneglyph, he found Watatsumi again, he convinced Watatsumi to join the new Fishman Pirates, and, you know, yada yada. Really good cover story. I enjoy it, so points for that. On Whole Cake Island, Jinbei comes back by once again, guess what, saving Luffy's life yet again. He one-shots um, Charlotte's Opera, one fishman punch, frees Luffy and Nami from the book prison, helps them get out of there, and then they go scheming and conniving to figure out how are we going to assassinate Big Mom. Well, Jinbei still has something to do. Later on in the arc, he confronts Big Mom directly at the wedding. He says, listen, sick of it i'm not gonna be part of your crew anymore i'm not afraid of you take my life i want to be on the crew of the king of the pirates big mom tries to use her um soul stealing powers guess what they don't work against someone who's not afraid of her this man jinbei is not afraid of amir yonko he's gonna be part of the of the pirate king's crew what does he look like being afraid of a of a yonko when he's going to join the king of the pirates one of the best scenes in one piece in my opinion one of the best scenes just shows how far this man is willing to go. Repeatedly, Jinbei has said, I am willing to risk my life for this man. I'm willing to die for Luffy. And he proves it every time. He proves it every time. He stands up to Big Mom. One of the scariest pirates on the seas, Big Mom. Obviously, Big Mom is pissed. She starts chasing after these fools. Later on in the arc, she's tearing up the Thousand Sunny. Jinbei jumps out of the ocean, hits her with a vagabond drill. She's not out. She's not done. She's not even really hurt, but she's off the ship. That's all that had to be done at the moment. I'm not asking for too much. He did what he had to do. No power scaling here. I'm not saying that Jinbei could beat Big Mom. I'm just saying that when he had to, he did what he had to do. Anyway, she keeps chasing them, and um, Jinbei stays back with the Fishman Pirates to try and keep her from uh, capturing the Straw Hats before they get to Wano, and he promises Luffy, I'll meet you in Wano. I'll get there when I get there, but I'm gonna get there. It's going to take me a little longer, but I'm going to get there. Then we don't see Jinbei for a while again. Let's talk about the most recent chapters. So, Jinbei gets to Wano. He meets back up before the raid on Origashima. And right before the raid, you know, feel good moment. We're going to have a feast once we beat Kaido. The matchups are set. Jinbei is fighting who's who. The prehistoric saber tooth tiger devil fruit user. And a man who used to be in the Cypher Pole organization. A man who used to be a rival to Rob Lucci. Rob Lucci, one of the strongest opponents Luffy fought way back in Idiot's Lobby. He went toe to toe with him. He had to really pull it out to beat Rob Lucci. 
and this man is a rival to him. This is a great scene. This is a great choreographed fight with Fishman Karate going up against the Cypher Pole fighting style Rokushiki and boy I am really enjoying it right now and I can't wait to see this anime. Jinbei again shows that he is a tank. He is that man. He is that fish man. He takes uh, one of uh, Who's Who's attacks directly to face, steps on his tail, sets it up, wham blam we're eating ham, hits him with the gargoyle tile fist and that's where the chapter ends that's where we're at so far my appreciation for Jinbei keeps going up every time this man comes back into the story my appreciation for him goes up and it is at an all-time high right now he just came back in the anime he's doing work in the manga I do I think that the fight between him and who's who is over no I don't think that fight is over yet I think it's gonna start winding down who's who's gonna pull something out Jinbei's gonna pull something out show his determination put him out for the count who knows how much endurance these um, Zoan, these ancient Zoans have, but I think Jinbei is going to overcome it at the end of the day. I am really enjoying the direction which Oda is taking these fights. They keep getting up, like Ulti keeps getting up, even after taking a direct hit from Big Mom, taking uh, lightning blasts from Nami. I think, you know, they have a lot of endurance. It makes sense in the story. It has been stated before, and even when they get awakened, even more endurance. Soans are ridiculously tough. There's no problem in them keep getting up. There's no problem in that because that has already been established. They are stamina freaks. Anyway, let me know what you think about Jinbei in the comments below. Where do you think the story is going to go from here? Do you think the fight is over? I'm very hyped about the rest of this fight and I'm super hyped to see this animated because it's going to look so good. Fishman Karate is one of my favorite fighting styles in One Piece and to get it showcased uh, in a fight like this, finally we get a one-on-one -on -one with Jinbei as a straw hat. He is on the crew now. He is in it to win it and he's going to see Luffy become the King of the Pirates. Let me know what you thought of the newest chapter in the comments below, what you think about Jinbei and until next time, I will catch you later. Thank you for watching.